Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be continuing the restoration of the Jeep Comanche. So far, we've installed all new parts on the front end, and the interior has been completely restored. So those were the first two parts of the restoration. But what's next? Well, remember that sport bar that I bought back in December? Before it can be installed, it needs to be repainted. We're also going to install these vintage Jeep rims. And in this video, you'll see how they went from this to this. So with that being said, let's begin part three of the Jeep restoration. So something I haven't really explained before is, what is my ultimate vision for this truck? Well, everything I've done so far is based off of the high-level trims back in the 80s. This is ultimately how I'd like the truck to look. The chrome trim, the sport bar, and those turbine rims, it really looks sharp. I've been working on this truck one section at a time. And in this video, we're going to be putting the finishing touches on it to make it look like this high-level trim from the 80s. So let's start with the sport bar. Here's how it looked when I bought it. It's not in bad shape by any means. In fact, it's in really good shape considering the age of it. But there is a little bit of wear and tear and scratches on it, so I'm going to spray paint it so it looks brand new. To prep the bar for painting, I bought some emery cloth and roughed up the surface. This will ensure that the paint adheres well to it. Next, I wiped it down with some paint thinner, making sure to get the surface all clean. Afterwards, I took a warm bucket of water and wiped it down once again. Once the bar was completely dry, it was ready to paint. The spray paint that I'm using is Krylon Semi-Flat. This is a paint that I've used for many different auto applications, and it always seems to look really good. It's not too glossy, it's not too flat, it's the perfect amount of both. My grandpa was there to help me out with the painting. I'm pretty positive we ended up putting three coats on. Now the reason we put this bar on a trailer was so that we could take it to the garage where it's nice and warm without having to touch it. So now the bar can stay in the heated garage overnight. This semi-flat paint looks great. So here's what it looked like before, and here it is after. Now the next thing we need to do is get some new rims. I found these rims on Facebook Marketplace. They're original Jeep turbine rims. A reconditioned rim can go for $150 a piece. I paid $12.50 a rim. The reason I chose these rims is because they're the same ones found in the old advertisement. You can see the date on it is September 12th, 1986. These could have been on a Cherokee or they could have been on a Comanche. But one thing is for sure, they're in very rough shape. They're in desperate need of a cleaning. At first, I wasn't sure how to restore these rims. So I went to my cousins and had him sand down a small section just to see how it would look. And after a quick polish, it looked great. So at least now I know the rims can be restored, but it's going to take a lot of work to sand them down. So here's how I did it. I bought this orbital sander for 25 bucks at Harbor Freight. I also bought plenty of hook and loop 220 grit sandpaper discs. So this kind of gives you an idea how the orbital sander works. Just slowly turning up the speed there. I'm actually really impressed with this. For 25 bucks, you can't beat it. So for each rim, I took the orbital sander and sanded down all over on the top of the rim. You can see on this spoke how bad it looks. Now as soon as I take the sander, I don't even have to press it hard, it just sands it all the way. So the top surface looked really good. But in between the spokes, if you got up close, you could see that it still had some crud on it. And no matter how much I sanded it down by hand, I could not remove it. Then my grandpa said, why not just paint the inside of the spokes black? So that's what we decided to do. We taped up the rims with 3M automotive tape so that we could spray paint in between the spokes. The first step would be putting a primer on. I chose this engine enamel, and then on top I'm going to use the same semi-flat that I've been using on other parts. So first came the primer. The primer that I chose is really good at withstanding heat, so it should be able to last a long time. Next came the semi-flat black paint. The light gray primer made it easy to see where you missed a spot. We took our time and made sure to get every little crevice of the rim. We let the rims dry for an hour in a warm garage. After an hour, we peeled back the tape. The rims look a whole lot better than they did originally. It was a lot of work, but it was definitely worth it. So now that the rims were painted, it was time to get them installed. At first, I was a little bit nervous that something was going to be wrong with my new rims and they wouldn't work, but fortunately, they had no issues. 
Once the rims were installed, I had a little bit of a dilemma. I wasn't sure whether I should put the center caps on. It doesn't look half bad with no center caps. But after thinking it over, and then asking you guys what you thought, I decided I would put the caps on. But the caps that I had were a little bit faded. So I taped them up, put some primer on, and then afterwards, I put on some semi-flat black paint. So once they were dry, I peeled back the tape, and here's the result. I used the same black paint that I used for the rims and the sport bar. I didn't realize how badly faded these were until I put them side by side. So now that the caps have a fresh coat of paint, it's time to install them. Here's how they turned out. I think by painting black in between the spokes, it actually looks even better than the original. Now it was time to install the sport bar. We're gonna bolt it to the bed and also install some KC driving lights on it. To complement the new paint job, I went ahead and bought some new bolts. I sprayed the heads of the bolts with some primer and then topped it off with the semi-flat black paint. Here's how they turned out. The first step was drilling holes into the bed. We had the bar all centered up the way we wanted it, and drilled straight through the holes. The only other brackets I received when I bought this bar were the ones for the kickers. You can see that you just place them on the inside of the wheel well, and then put the bolts straight through. So we got the bar installed, but before we did that, we made sure to get some wires routed through it so that we could hook up the new KC lights. My cousin used this wire loom that worked really well. So here it is coming through the bed, and you can see we just kind of wrapped it around the frame, and then it just travels along and makes its way to the engine bay. The kit I purchased had everything we needed to hook it up. The wires were routed through the engine bay to the battery. Now we had to route wires to get the switch hooked up. To make it a little easier on ourselves, we lifted the truck up. It's gonna come just right there. ET. Look at that. Oh. Is that not perfect? Once the wires were connected, the truck was lowered back down. The last step was to install the switch. I removed the bolts from the dash bezel so we could pull it back a little bit. We decided to put the switch right beside the fog light switch. Then came the moment of truth. Wonderful. There it is. It's all finished. And there it is. Oh, I do too. It really sets it off. Thanks to my cousin, the sport bar install went real smooth. I just love the way this bar looks. But the truck still isn't finished. There are still so many things that need to be done. In the next video, I'll be going to a junkyard with four Comanches. And I'll also be installing some rear window louvers. Now, I won't give away all the details, but basically, rear window louvers were available back in the 80s. But the originals are next to impossible to find. Well, fortunately, I managed to find a company in Canada that still makes them. Now they do look slightly different from the original, but they still look pretty cool. Other than in advertisements and this one picture from the Comanche Club forum, I have never seen louvers on someone else's Comanche. So I'm pretty excited to get them installed. It's been about six months since I purchased the truck and I'm really happy with the progress so far. So thanks so much for watching this video and we'll see you next time.